everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's a Puro Mom again with the Two Toy Puro. So today will be a reaction regarding this video that's been going viral here in the Philippines about two clients that reported this seller that basically they were being scammed because one bought a dog for 430,000 and the dog died after one to two days while the other one was given a dog that wasn't what was promised. So if you guys are interested in that then please keep on watching. Unfortunately, I cannot do the usual reaction video that most YouTubers like this post online because of the fair use policy. Please bear with me as I will constantly be looking at my notes because like I said, I cannot show the video and um, I wanted to make sure that I will stick to the facts and stuff. Everything including Mr. Tulfo's videos will be linked in the description box below as well as my sources of information regarding the facts that we will be correcting. So let's summarize the story or the facts first. So there are two clients that reported one seller. So client one ordered a giant poodle for 442,700 pesos. That's 430,000 for the actual dog itself only and then shipping that costs 12,700. So this totals to around 9,000 to $10,000 if I'm not mistaken. It's a party colored poodle that is to be imported from China to the Philippines. On June 30th, that's when she got her dog that is actually Actually, the second dog because of the delays the first dog apparently tested positive for um, parvo so it wasn't brought to her and then the second dog was sent to her mm. at 10 p.m. when the dog arrived apparently it was already sick like it was weak um, had a runny nose the dog was twitching but it was very late at night already so they couldn't take it to the vet no vet would accept it so the next morning as as soon as the vet opened they called their vet the next day and brought it to vet number one vet number one tested the puppy for canine distemper so they were asked to go to another vet because they did not have the facilities to handle the disease vet number two um, also diagnosed the puppy with canine distemper so that's two tests in one day and asked the owner that the dog had to be confined um, the vet asked if how long has the puppy been like this and all the other necessary questions and they said that the puppy was wasn't with them for more than 24 hours so when client one contacted the seller the seller said that it was because the puppy was got sick because of the travel because it was stressed and everything but the vet said that yes travel is very stressful for dogs but it could not have been during the transport from manila to Baguio where the client lives to have distemper right away because there is what you call an incubation period for this disease and we will discuss this further later okay. so client number two ordered a toy poodle for 145,000 and that's around three thousand dollars more or less so the seller said that the puppy will arrive after seven days because that's how long it takes for the shipment so the puppy will be coming from Vietnam to the Philippines but it arrived in just two days client two of course was surprised and she asked for papers and proof of travel when she asked that, the seller would not provide it for her. The reason why she's asking for this is because of this over here. Notice how the puppy looks different from the puppy that actually arrived. So client said she did not want to pay the second half because it's unacceptable, which is very true because this is not what she was promised. And client wants to return the puppy. So seller said she will accept the puppy, but she will not give a refund. So client two, only after receiving the puppy, she started doing her research to find out what documents she needed from the seller and stuff because she was already having doubts on whether her puppy was um, imported or not and she had her dog checked for a microchip no microchip was found that's why she started doing her own digging and tried to find where client where the seller possibly had bought her puppy bottom line client two was able to find the seller who sold her puppy to the, the said seller in this video for 35,000 pesos that is around i think 600 to 700 dollars which she in turn sold to client two for 145,000 pesos or three thousand dollars another proof that client two presented was that she emailed the kennel club of vietnam the governing body that releases the certificate of pedigree whether or not her dog can have these documents or not of course any purebred dog can have documents because seller was saying that because of the size of her dog, this toy poodle, the dog is not allowed to be given certificates of pedigree. Regarding the microchip, when she told the seller of this, was saying that the microchip during transport, it has happened apparently with her other clients, 
that during transport they can get injured that the microchip will fall off. Okay, that's more or less all the facts that we have. So let us correct certain information. First of all, there are no such things as giant poodles or teacup poodles. Giant poodles are standard poodles. I have a video on this and I stated it many, many times, not only in this video, but in many videos that I have been posting. If somebody is selling a dog to you and calling them giant as a breed standard, that already in itself is a red flag in my opinion because they do not know anything about the breed standard. Please feel free to check with the FCI or the AKC. They are called standard poodles. Number two, this is something I think a lot of people are very interested in, which is the price. Now, in my opinion, there is no set price for any poodle. There's no standard for it because in my opinion, every dog breeder has their own standard for asking for whatever they want. But the mere fact that one, the color of the poodle is a party colored poodle, usually, they use the terms rare, giant, and so many other terms that they coin just to mark up the price. Party colored poodles or two-tone poodles are not allowed to be shown. It's a genetic fault. Only solid colors are allowed to be shown on the show ring. That's as far as I know. So if you are being priced for the rarity of the color and the rarity of the size of the dog, that's a red flag. For the price that was paid of almost $9,000 to $10,000. According to my show breeder friends, that's already a top quality pup, meaning it descended from a very, very good line of poodles. And based on the videos and the pictures um, presented in Mr. Tulfo's video, in my selfish opinion, based on all that I have seen only in that video, I do not think it's a show quality or a top quality pup that they paid for. Not to mention, genuinely responsible and very reputable breeders are very particular when it comes to selling their puppies. They will not just sell to anyone. They are very, very meticulous when it comes to these things. And the mere fact that there is a middleman that will sell the puppy to another person is something that any very responsible breeder will not do. If I were a breeder, I will never allow a middleman to sell my puppy to somebody else that I don't know because I would want to know where my puppies are coming from because I want updates. I want to know that they're going to good families. And if, if for any reason they cannot take care of the pup, I will also be the first person that they will contact because I will be helping them rehome the pup myself. Now let's talk about color a little bit. Poodles, as I have mentioned in the past, tend to fade. Summer is the perfect example for that. So you can expect poodles to change color, but in this picture over here, clearly it's not the same dog because for one, this picture probably was shown to the owner a few days before it was shipped and in two days, voila, it just magically faded into that color. Yes, poodles will fade or will get darker, but it does not happen in just a few weeks. It happens within a year or maybe two years even because summer, only faded completely to what her color is right now after two years. She started fading at around eight months. And surely this puppy is not more than four months or six months in my opinion. So next, oh, my favorite one, the microchip. If you guys are not familiar, a microchip is basically an identification tag for dogs that is inserted to their body. Now don't fret, it's no bigger than a grain of rice. So it's really, really tiny. Why do I know this? It's because I bought microchips for my dogs. They are locally bred dogs. Locally bred dogs don't usually have microchips, but you can have them have microchips. It depends. The seller said, as I have mentioned in the summary earlier, that the microchip, the reason why there is no microchip for the puppy of client number two is because it fell off. She said, during travel, the dog, or any dog for that matter, because it has happened before, according to her, that it got injured and the wound caused for the microchip to fall off. For once, when it was inserted in my dogs, it was quite deep. Of course, it, it's, it's not impossible for the microchip to fall off or get removed with a wound, provided that the wound is very deep and um, severe enough that it can chunk off that portion of where it is so that it can fall off or the wound is big enough for the microchip to be able to slip off. Now, if that happens, then the dog should have a big wound or a scar. But let's rewind. The dog was transported within just two days. If it had a severe wound, why is it all magically healed and there are no signs of the wound? The documents and certificate of pedigree. Oh. 
I am not an importer whatsoever, so I do not really know what documents you will need to bring. But I did have an experience of how to export a dog. And I would assume that more or less, you would need the same documents or similar documents. So every dog that is transported outside the country will need certain documents. Now, it will depend on the country, the requirements of the country where you will be taking the animal or will be shipping the animals to. In my case, I flew a toy poodle from the Philippines to Thailand. So when I was processing the papers and the documents of the dog, he did not have a certificate of pedigree. It was already with the owner because the certificate of pedigree is not actually required to be shipped with the dog. This can follow because it's true, it's true that there can be delays, especially now that there is a pandemic. But the documents for exportation and importation have to be present. So when I was exporting the dog, Kato, Kato needed all his export documents from the Philippines. For example, documents um, to certify that he is um, safe to fly, all his documents for um, updated vaccines whatsoever, and then there has to be a letter from the vet. And then there was another document that I had the vet process for me because I didn't want to go to the Bureau of Animal Industry myself for personal reasons. <laughs> and they did it for me. It's basically an export uh, permit from the Bureau of Animal Industry. Besides that, oh my gosh, then I had like a little bit of experience because I also had to email the Bureau of Animal Industry of Thailand to get an import permit for Kato. So, because I am the one bringing him there. I'm the one exporting, transporting, and importing him there because I'm the one bringing him to his pet parents. And I'm not doing it as a job. I just did it as a favor for a friend. So there are export permits and there are import permits. Now, as far as I know, some of the documents, the export permits and stuff, I had to surrender them to the Thai uh, quarantine facility area so that there was no need for me to quarantine Kato. So to sum it up, you will have take-home documents which you can present if being asked by your client if you're transporting a dog for them. Now the certificate of pedigree, yes, it can follow. The funny thing is, seller was saying that the certificate of pedigree of the dog, of a toy poodle, she said that Vietnam does not, does not provide certificates of pedigree for the size of her dog. So it was correct for client number two to email Vietnam to check if this was true. And she had proof, an email from them, that they do provide certificates of pedigree for these sizes of dogs. Any purebred dog from a reputable breeder will have a certificate of pedigree. Now, whether it's gonna be given to the buyer, that's up to the seller. Because there are certain things, for example, if there is a breeder, um, sometimes they will um, hold back the certificate of pedigree because there are terms in the contract, for example. If, let's say, I would be selling a dog as a pet, I will not be giving the certificate of pedigree until they show me proof that the puppy is neutered or spayed. Now, the certificate of pedigree cannot be given to pups that are mixed breeds, and that's a totally different topic. But even if a purebred dog was bred with another purebred dog of a different breed, a certificate of pedigree will not be given because those are the rules. <laughs> I don't know, ask them. But that's how it works. I hope that information helps. Next, let's talk about distemper. Um, there's no misinformation. Uh, I just want to include it here because I want to emphasize because I've seen comments where they were judging the first clinic where the dog was taken. Guys, you have to understand that distemper is a highly contagious disease. It is airborne. So, it is natural for certain vet clinics to reject a patient, not because they do not want to help, but because maybe, just maybe, they do not have the facilities to address the disease, which is why they will kindly refer you to other people. Do not feel offended when they do that. It's not discrimination. They want what's best for your pups as well. I want to emphasize what the vet said, that there is an incubation period. And when I googled it, the incubation period can be from one to four weeks or even longer for other dogs for the disease to settle in. It mentioned that the dog was already twitching when it arrived. That is already a sign that 
it's in the latter part of the disease, meaning it's already reached the nervous system, and that is very, very crucial. There are dogs that can still survive this, but the chances of survival is very, very, very low. Please check with your vets. So in this case, definitely it did not come from client Stu's house, nor the transport service. My battery died. <laughs> So now let's talk about the takeaways from this whole fiasco. First of all, I'm not trying to play a blame game here. Again, the purpose of this video is to educate and to learn from the mistakes. Now, my thrust when it comes to that is to talk about things that could have been done to prevent it from happening. Because it's so much harder to solve a problem when the problem is there. It's much like how I handle the health of my dogs. I'm more prevention over finding a cure because it's so much harder to find a cure. And in this case, what's happening is they're trying to find a cure to the problem. So my number one takeaway is the lack of research. In this case, why, why didn't they ask for a contract? You're giving, come on, $9,000, $400,000, $450,000, $500,000. pesos more or less, if we round it off. You're releasing that much money without anything to hold. They're chasing after a problem that they don't have solid proof besides all the screenshots. Well, I know screenshots and um, conversations on all these chats can now be used in court, but it's it would have been different had they had a contract that they can present to a lawyer and have a basis of where they can handle this or tackle this to chase after because it's much harder when you're like a headless duck, literally just looking around, trying to figure out what you're gonna do. Even if you're just buying from a local breeder, if you're gonna be releasing that amount of money, any breeder will be willing to give you a contract because they, will, they themselves will have terms and conditions. Because it's not always the case where the seller is the scammer, okay? Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of friends too where the buyer is the scammer and the seller is the one that's chasing after the buyer because the seller this time cares very much for her dog. So um, it's not to be one-sided. And again, I'm not trying to play a blame game. All I'm saying is I think one of the main problems in this whole fiasco is that both clients lacked research. Had it been me buying that and releasing that amount of money, 145,000 or 450,000 even more so, the first thing I would do is check Facebook, check the groups, ask for information, gather information from the public. I'm sure there's bound to be one who's connected to this person because the pet industry is very small. It's, a, it's such a small world and you would be surprised as who knows who. There are so many ways now to find information or message, uh, I don't know, maybe social media people who have a lot of followers who have the same breeds as you ask around it never hurts i mean you will get a lot of rejections um i've had a lot of rejections as well but there's bound to be at least one nice soul there that will reply to you because you're not exactly asking for all that much you're just asking for information so research 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 that's actually one of the main reasons why i started this channel in the first place because i have had my fair share of mistakes and I have learned from them and I do not want it to happen to any other person. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and we'll see you again next time. Bye.